good morning, folks. Slightly quicker news today because at the end we've tagged on Magnetic Reconnection and Cosmic Plasma, our vitally important video that only about half of you have seen. So stay tuned for that after the show as we first come to spaceweathernews.com, finding a calm last day on our star. You will notice some residual blackouts as the satellite goes behind the Earth at this point in its orbit a number of times during the end of summer. Other satellites have been used to confirm the quiet during those periods as well. Sunspots departing over the western limb, but those facing Earth today are succumbing to the Earth-facing quiet a bit more than before. The delta potential is gone in the trailing umbra, it's decaying, and pretty much just split. Solar wind is bottoming out as well, so is the geomagnetic disruption, all calm above our heads. This often happens as the coronal holes to set the next stream impact are facing Earth, this system is right up against the northern system behind it as well. Mercury and the sun can join today, and there's about 36 to 48 hours left in the peak alert of this lithospheric effect. Let's check on a bit of weather where record snow and blizz days in Antarctica have wind-driven banks as tall as three snowcats stacked together. They also broke a record low mark for the day in Deer Park, Washington, second time we've seen that happen in the last few months. The bigger weather story, of course, is Hurricane Harvey. For exciting or deadly footage, you can feel free to watch the news. We're going to pull the GOES-13 images instead to watch the full coming together of a very disorganized bunch of clouds in the Gulf. Almost hard to believe that this mashup of vapor started spinning and organized into the Titan walking the beaches of Texas this morning. Continue to have thoughts with locals in the fray. Well, okay, stay tuned for magnetic reconnection and cosmic plasma after your wind maps, ways to get involved, and shots of our star to close. It is also Saturday, so suspiciousobservers.org website members, you've got your Fly on the Wall podcast coming in just a few hours. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Among you fully understands the mainstream physics of magnetic reconnection 
and potential conflicts with Alphen's words in the classic work Cosmic Plasma. It isn't the easiest concept to get one's head around, even if it can be represented conceptually in a very simple way. While not always in this configuration, the concept is that magnetic current breaks and reconnects with another field, transferring energy that is stored in the magnetic fields. Problem is, when you bring two magnets together, it doesn't work. Apologies for the yellow, but I knew what I was looking for in the book and didn't want to waste a lot of time finding it. Every electric circuit is explosive in that if disrupted, it will release the whole energy of the system at the point of disruption. This sounds a lot like the magnetic reconnection in mainstream science looks, so with Alfin discussing current circuit energy and mainstream describing energy stored in the magnetic fields, how do we connect the dots, or is there a disconnect? Let's continue reading. Alfin cautions against the concept of frozen-in magnetic field lines, a concept which dominates space plasma physics, especially because it is only valid as a relative descriptor in some situations and offers the impression of understanding where it is, in fact, lacking. Clearly, on the very next page, we see that space plasma rarely satisfies the requirements of modeling frozen-in lines, and further, it is not valid to use the concept in the outer magnetosphere or interplanetary space. This is why we keep seeing serious scientists demanding a rewrite or at least a reconsideration of the characterization of the energy behind these explosive events, even if a magnetic field reconnection is a very adequate way of qualitatively describing what effects result in the aftermath. So since we've got three U.S.-based scientists here looking into reconnection-based conundrums, perhaps they will see this video. And since Alfin's cosmic plasma is not cited among their references, I'd suggest they go looking for cracks in the foundation, rather than trying to figure out which coat of paint looks best.